Welcome, friend. I'm Rick Pasquale. Thank you for joining us today. I believe God has a word for you. I know God loves you and has a plan for your life. So listen to this live service and let God speak to you. There's thousands and thousands of people watching us dedicate David right now. And so I want you to listen to this, church, because not only are they dedicating, but you get to dedicate yourselves today as well. The Bible says in Mark's gospel, chapter 10, verses 14 and 16, let the children come to me, for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. Then he took the children into his arms and placed his hands on their heads, and he blessed them. Jeremiah says it like this, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Little David, you're going to have a future, my brother. Elkanah and Hannah brought Samuel to the Lord. Mary and Joseph brought the baby Jesus to the Lord. So today, these parents, Christian and Julia, bring their son David to be dedicated unto the Lord. The Bible says for us in Proverbs chapter 22 to train up a child in the way that he should go. And when they're old, they won't depart from it. It's the training. It's the nurturing. So Christian and Julia recognize this responsibility today. And they bring their son David and their beautiful (laughs) children. You did great today too. And they dedicate themselves as a family in the responsibilities to raise this child in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. They're not going to do it on their own strength or their own wisdom, but they're going to do it with the Lord's help. So I'm going to ask you a couple things. Do you promise before God and these witnesses that you will live a godly example before David? Good answer. Do you promise to lead David to know the Lord in a personal way when he's old enough to know that? Good answers. Congregation, do you promise to assist these parents in the spiritual care of their son, David? Good answer. I get to hold him one more time. Hey, little man. Today, you've dedic- you're in about to dedicate little David to the Lord. Sisters, you've got a big job. You get to help. Yeah, you do. <laughs> Whether you like it or not, you're going to make a, a major influence in little, little David's life. He's going to look to you to see how you're doing life. He's going to look to you, Julia, how you do life. Christian, how you do life. This is a gift from God. The day as you give him to the Lord, you're saying, Lord, we're going to need your help in raising this man, this God-fearing man. (laughs) David, God's going to place his hand on your life, and you're going to be awesome. He's smiling at me. (laughs) We ought to put that on live stream. I mean, that's amazing. You smiled at the preacher. Tell all them people they should smile at the preacher too. Yeah. So let me pray. Would you extend your hands again, please? Lord Jesus, I thank you today for David. I thank you for Christian and Julia and this dear family that's saying to you, Lord, we're giving David back to you because we need your help, Lord. We need your help. As we dedicate him to you, we give him back to you, Lord, so that you can help us. And Lord, I pray today for Christian that you let him be the man of God and help him to be the man of God he needs to be. I pray for Julia today. I pray that you help her to be the woman of God you've intended for her life. And so, Lord, today I bless this family. And Lord, we dedicate David so that he grows up to know you and to be a God-fearing man, a little man that rises to be a big man that says to you, Lord, by my example, I follow you, Lord. I follow you, Jesus, and I will serve you all the days of my life. 
Lord, I pray an anointing on this home as they follow you. So, Lord, today I bless this family, and I dedicate this child, David, in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Wow. It's amazing how that I dedicate a little boy named David today, and that we're on a series this month about David. Now, how did God work that out? You know, when we think about the, the process of, of, of the sermons and how we write them, and, you know, all I know is that God gives you, as Brother Masua said today, he gives you the right words at the right time for your life. He knows exactly what every person in this room or is watching live stream around the world needs today. And so as I preach this message that God has given me about David on our third week on this series, I want you to know that my title is because I've, I, I, how it worked out, I, I have no idea. All I know is this is God. Destiny is in the Lord's hands. That's the title of my message. Destiny is in the Lord's hands. I want you to know God loves you and he has a plan for your life. I'm going to say that again. God loves you and he has a plan for your life. And the plan is to bless you. That wasn't just the plan for this little baby. That's the plan for every one of our lives. So as we talked about the last couple weeks in week one, I'm just going to give you a brief summary so that you, if you're brand new today, you're catching up on our series. It's your birthright was week number one. It's God-given, not man-given. God gives you the lineage. God puts you in the right line. David was anointed to be the king at a young age, but didn't become the king until later in life. Do you hear what I just said? He was anointed as a young boy to be the king of Israel. But he didn't get to be the king until later a number of years later. Second week, we talked about action is needed. We can run to the action or we can run away. Remember, we were talking about David and Goliath. And, and, and so many times we think, well, I, I'm just going to keep praying. I believe in prayer. You know that. But there's times that you've got to put some feet on your prayers. What that means is... Put some action on your prayers. You can sit around all you want and say, God's going to answer. Yeah, as soon as you do something. Hello? Now, I know I have a few hundred people that have decided to take the month off. Seriously, if you're new today, this place is normally jam-packed. You can't get a chair. And, and I'm telling you, there's a lot of our people gone. But God has something for you today, and you say so you're going to have to make up the volume difference of why the, the room has some empty chairs this, this week. So you have to shout twice as loud, okay? Yeah. Goliath was killed by David with a slingshot and a stone. Think about that. Big old nine foot, six inch Goliath was killed with a slingshot. And a stone. Wow. And the reason that he was killed and the giant was killed in David's life, the giant was killed in Israel's life, is because he went to the battle. He didn't run away from the battle. There was a whole lot of army guys sitting there waiting for somebody to do something. They were afraid, the Bible says. They were sitting there thinking, oh, what's going to happen? What's going to happen? Hundreds and thousands of people sitting there on the hill. But David, at 17 years of age, decided, I'm going to take this giant out. So don't tell me you're too young or you're too old or you're in the middle. God has a plan for your life. Run to the action. Don't run away from the action. So that's what we've been dealing with the last two weeks. So now you're caught up. 
Our scripture verse for the month as the people read to you today, Psalms 118, verse number 15, shouts of joy and victory resound in the tents of the righteous. The Lord's right hand has done mighty things. You heard some testimonies today of people that the Lord has done some mighty things for. And if we would have went around the room and asked a number more of you, you could have testified of the good things that the Lord has done. We have been praying in our church for a number of months for the nation of South Sudan. And there has, it has been a war-torn nation. It has been a nation that has had multiple complications. But we have seen over the last number of months some peace and some harmony come to that nation. It just so happened that Christian and Julia come from South Sudan, the ones we dedicated their children, or their child today. But I was reminded of another country again today, of Cameroon. Cameroon is a worn, torn country right now. My brother who sits in our church today is from Cameroon. Have I said that right, my brother? And his family is the middle of a war where fighting is on both sides. And his family right now is right in the middle of that. And people are dying. People are being massacred. And I think it would be appropriate, as i about to preach on the victory is coming, for us to pray for victory to come in that country where peace happens. So, church, if you're one of our guests today, this we believe in prayer in our church. And I want us to vocally lift up our voice. Matter of fact, I want you to stand up where everyone in this room, and I want you to pray for peace in Cameroon right now. Would you do that? Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus that God, peace comes there. Protect this family. God, I know that my brother is anxious about this situation, and I know that this country is in turmoil. But I know that you are the God that can bring peace. That's who you are, God. You are peace. God, I pray today for this nation. I pray today that peace happens. I pray that for the groups of people that are fighting, that they will stop their fighting. And this family in the middle of this will be at peace, God. I pray it in the name of Jesus. And God, we want to hear testimony of the positive that has happened from our church in Rome, Italy today and around the world praying for the nation of Cameroon. Thank you, Lord, for answering our prayer today. In Jesus' name, amen. I want you to look at your neighbor right now and say, God just heard your prayer. God heard your prayer. My brother from Cameroon, God heard your prayer. You may be seated. So I've entitled my chat today, Destiny is in the Lord's Hands. Isn't that appropriate? Destiny is in the Lord's Hands. In 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verse number 15, it says something that's very powerful to me. It's, it's just one of those verses that you need to hang your hat on. It's one of those Bible verses that you should say, man, if they can do that, I'm good. I want you to just read the last line. For the battle is not yours, but God's. Okay? Now, I know we have a number of languages going on right now with the headsets and all. I got that. So whatever language you've got to read it in, read that last part again. Go ahead. Think about it. Put it back in Italian. The battle is not yours, but God. So it doesn't matter what you're going through. Doesn't matter what the fight is. 
doesn't matter what's happening. Destiny is in the Lord's hands. All right, I got three points for you today. Number one, the odds are normally against you. The odds are normally against you. The enemy would say that, I'm going to win this. Goliath said, I'm going to defeat you. Probably in your situation and your story, whoever that is that you're up against, a financial need, a family problem, a crisis going on, I can tell you that the odds are stacked against you. If not, you would have already won that battle. Hello? You've already taken care of that one. If it was stacked differently and you say, man, I can do this one. I could have won this battle. You already won that battle. So normally, the odds are stacked against you. Giants seem big. The Goliaths look big. The circumstance is always bigger than what you believe. Your enemy plays with your mind to try to convince you you can't win. You're not going to succeed. We have another brother in our church this week that's leaving to go back to Sweden. His name is Connie. He's got, been through some difficult things in his life. But in the number of months that he's been at ICF Rome, I can tell you God has put a new purpose in his life. He stood in our offices this morning to, to thank us and introduce us to a friend. But he, he was saying something has happened in his life in the positive since he started coming to our church. Let me tell you, my friend, when you look at life's circumstances, they always look big. They always seem bigger than what you can accomplish. Remember, God is bigger than any giant. There's not a giant. There's not a circumstance. There's not a problem that is bigger than your God. Destiny is in the Lord's hands. Your destiny. Your family's destiny. Your decision about what you need to do is in the Lord's hands. Now, I'm not going to ask you, nor the people on the live stream and the YouTube and all those things that are watching this right now, but how many has made a decision in your life now, I'm, I'm asking you now because the world will be watching you. The camera is all over this room, so I don't want you to tell the world the answer to my question. How many of you have made a mistake in the decision that you made, and you look back on it and say, I made the wrong decision? You don't, don't raise your hand. <laughs> I'm trying to protect you from the world scene. But if we'd all be honest, every one of us would raise both hands. Boy, I'd like to go back and change that one. It was a dumb thing I did. Or I didn't really have the right answer. I made a mistake. I'm here to tell you that God don't look at our mistakes. He looks at the potential of what is about to happen. I'm going to say that again. God doesn't look at your mistake. He looks at the potential of about what is going to happen. We used to sing a song when I was a choir director. <laughs> I had this big choir my dad was the pastor, and I was the choir director. And, I had to, and we started every Sunday with this song, Something Good is Going to Happen to You. Every Sunday. People would say, Pastor, aren't you going to change the song? No. I like this one. Because I want the people in this room to believe something good is going to happen to them today. Not next week. Not next month, not next year, today. Because people walk into churches all over the world expecting something good to happen. You didn't show up to church today to think, well, I hope something bad happens. 
or I hope it's really boring so I can take a nap. You walked in here today saying, believing, I hope something good happens today. Destiny is in the Lord's hands. Something good is about to happen. Remember what I say almost every week. You're one prayer away from a miracle. One prayer. What if today would be the day that you get the answer to the prayer? One prayer. When we come to the end of our service, we always bring everyone to the front to offer prayers unto the Lord. That thing that's been that giant in your life, that circumstance, why not today to God to defeat them for you? Destiny is in the Lord's hands. Number two, the outcome of the battle is the Lord's. The odds are against you, but the outcome is the Lord's. See, as I told you last week, you've got to get prepared. David won because he had the slingshot and he had the rock. He had the stone in the slingshot. He wasn't going to win if he hadn't been prepared. He went to fight Goliath, but he was prepared. See, whether you want to hear this or not, and this would be all the naysayers in the room, there is a battle coming. If you're not dealing with anything today, you're probably going to deal with something sooner or later. There will probably be a problem happen. Now, I choose to live life when the problems come that I'm going to win. I choose. That's how I've chosen. This week, thank you for all the birthday cards and wishes and all the presents and all the stuff you've given me. Thank you. But now I'm 61 years of age, and I choose to live life believing that God is for me. I choose to believe that when I face my next battle, that I'm going to win. I choose. Now, I could choose. Oh, it's all bad. Oh, I've been forsaken. Oh, I got a pain right here. Many of you know I broke my ribs a few weeks ago. You see, you, you, and every one of us know somebody just like that. It's always bad. Hello? Three people in the whole room believe there's always somebody. We always know somebody like that. You ask them the story, and it's always bad. Oh. Right? I choose not even hang out with them people. Seriously. Why do I want those people around me? I want people to say, I'm blessed. I'm highly favored of God. God knows how to take care of me. God loves to fight for me. The battle is the Lord's. I am a victory. Boy, you're all fired up today. I just came back from a prayer retreat, a whole week of in the mountains of Perugia, praying and seeking God's face for what God's going to give us for next year. Boy, you can't wait till next year. It's going to be amazing what God's going to do. I'm telling you. See, the outcome of the battle is God's. David, when he went down to visit his brothers because his father asked him to go deliver some bread and some cheese, he had no idea that he was going to fight a Goliath. Had no clue. Because some of us would have gone the other direction. I'm going to disobey my dad today. I'm going to go the other direction. But he went. He obeyed his father. And he gets to beat a giant. And now a few thousand years later, there's this dude in Rome, Italy, telling you the story of David and Goliath. And I dedicate a little baby named David today. How appropriate is this message for us today. So I want you to know, my friend, whether you like this statement or not, 
your Goliaths are coming. I'm telling you. Oh, Pastor, you made me feel so bad today. You told me the Goliaths are coming. Oh, it's going to be so bad. It's going to be. They're coming. But greater is it he that is in you than he that is that giant. I'm telling you. How do you want to look at it? I choose that I can win. I choose that I can be uh, the, the victory guy in this story. Not the defeated guy in the story. The guy that has won the victory in the story. I'm not the only David in this room. Hear me. God is for you. He has picked you. He has created you. So I choose. I want you to choose today to get ready. Get ready. Get ready for the battle is the Lord's. Be prayed up. You know, I've talked about this so much. Pray, 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 pray. But sooner or later, you got to get to the battle. Don't just pray it. Get there. Do something. I have all these people all the time tell me, oh, pastor, we're just praying. Six months later, oh, we're just praying. A year later, oh, we're just praying. I think sooner or later, we ought to go ahead and take the giant out. Hello? Oh, we're just going to pray about it. We're going to pray about it. I'm going to live in fear for the next year while I'm praying about it. But just take your little slingshot and your little stone and go take care of the giant. Because God will be there for you. Second part of that is not only pray, but read the Bible. Take this book. The Bible says... Take the sword of the Spirit. Take, take God's Word and implant it in your life. Don't let this be the only word you get every week, just the word I'm giving you. And many of you watch the, the rewinds of all the messages. I, I, thank you for doing all that. And you should do it, and you should send it around the world so that others can hear it. But you've got to get a hold of your own Bible, and you've got to open it up, and you've got to put it in your heart every single day of your life. This is what's going to keep you strong. Thank you for listening to my messages. Thank you for saying that you get the word on Sunday. Thank you for doing that. I'm not here to tell you stories. I'm here to give you the living word of God that will transform your life. That if you apply this word to your life, you will walk out of these doors today and every day as being the person living in victory. Not defeat, in victory. Remember, destiny is in the Lord's hands. And lastly today, show up, stand firm, and see the Lord's work. See, God already knew that David was in his lineage. You Bible scholars in the room are going to get this, I'm telling you. God already knew that David was in the lineage. Remember, he knows where we come from. He knew it before we were in the mother's womb. He knew the plan of life for David. He knew David was going to be in the lineage. You're not getting that yet, are you? He knows you're in the lineage. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. What do you mean? You've been adopted. If you love God, if you've invited God into your life, you've been adopted into the lineage. Hallelujah. The family of God. I know there's religions in the world that teach different. I was reading one this week where they, there's only a certain group of people that get to be in this religion. Well, they don't believe the Bible then. There's no possible way. The Bible says everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. When you get saved, your name is written in the Lamb's book of life. And if you die, you get to go to heaven. Why did Brother Masua today say that someday he will see his wife? Because he believed, like I believe, and like you should believe, that you are on your way to heaven, and there's not a giant in your life that can defeat you. 
Now I know I just messed up all my translators, but I couldn't pause at any time. God bless you, translators. <laughs> Hear me. Hear this pastor's heart today. You are not defeated. You're not going to be defeated. You're in the lineage. So I want you to show up. Abraham showed up for his assignment. He put the child on the altar. Rahab showed up for her assignment. She put the cord in the window. Nehemiah showed up for his assignment when everybody was against him and a whole lot of opposition. The three Hebrew children, they showed up for their assignment. 17-year-old boys, our God will save us, O king. But if he doesn't, it doesn't make any difference. For our God is for us. These were 17-year-old boys. God is for us. Gideon showed up for his assignment. Afraid. Hear me, my friend. I know some of you may be nervous. Some of you may be anxious. Some of you may be even a little bit afraid. But he still obeyed God. And he reduced the amount of army guys that he had on his team. God said, no, no, no. Take those guys out. And take those few thousand out. I'm going to show you that I'm going to fight this battle for you. And you're going to win. Gideon kept saying, okay, God. But he had to show up for his assignment. <laughs> Probably one of my favorite Bible stories people ask me all the time. Pastor, what, what's one of your favorite Bible stories? It's an obscure story. It's found in um, 2 Chronicles chapter 20. It's the Bible verse that I read for you today. It's three lepers sitting at a gate. And the word said, if we stay here, we die. If we go back into the city, we die. If we go to the enemy's camp, we die. What did the three guys say? We stay here, we die. We're lepers. We're starving to death. If we go back into the city, there's a famine in our city. They're not going to let us in to our city because we're lepers. And there's this big enemy over there. We might as well go over there. Can you see these lepers? Maybe they didn't have their fingers. They maybe not had their ears. Maybe, maybe one of them didn't have a leg. I don't know. But can you see them? They didn't have no swords or spears or shit. They didn't have no stones. They didn't have nothing. They had their faith to believe that God was going to help them. And they made it over to the enemy's camp. There's a song that says, I went to the enemy's camp. Whew. And they get to the enemy's camp and nobody sees them. They're like they're invisible. They open the first door of the first tent. And they say, oh boy, they left their lunch. They sat down and started, they were starving to death. They started eating. Then they saw the gold. And they saw the new clothes. And they said, oh my goodness, look what God has done. And you know what they said? God is for us. And we can't keep this to ourselves. Someday I'll preach a whole series on this, but when you think about that, three, those guys right then, they had nothing. They were ostracized by their own family and friends and community. All they had was each other. And I'm sure they weren't the nicest to each other. Poor, no food, about to die. And here they find themselves sitting in a tent with plenty of food, plenty of clothes, plenty of everything. And they said, you know what? We can't keep this to ourselves. 
there's a city back there that needs to know there's victory out here. There's a city back there that needs to know there's victory right here. I'm telling you, my friend, we have the message to tell to the world. God loves you and has a plan for your life. It's not a complicated message. You are God's ambassadors to the world. He happens to have you right here in Rome for a season, for a moment. So show up, stand firm, and see the Lord work. He's ready to work on your behalf. The three Hebrew children showed up. I'm telling you, it is amazing on each of these stories. I could preach on each one. Ananias showed up. He, he, he was supposed to just minister to Saul, but he knew he was a murderer. But he showed up. Not every assignment you get is going to be easy. Some of them will be hard. But God will go before you. God will help you. David showed up, and a Goliath gets taken out. See, every one of these stories had a person who was given an assignment and decided that their destiny was in the Lord's hands. I'm going to say that again. Every one of these stories that I just told you about in a brief fashion, every one of them had these people that had been given a God-given assignment, do this, and they decided the destiny is in God's hands. See, every one of these stories has a great ending. See, God provided the ram to be the sacrifice for Abraham. He didn't have to commit his son. Though he had the son on the altar, God brought the ram exactly at the right time so that the sacrifice could be then given thousands of years later. But there is going to be an ultimate sacrifice. His name is Jesus. He will be the Savior of the world. God saved Rahab's family with just letting down a cord. Wow. And those of you that were with us a few months ago, you know Boaz was her son. He's in the lineage. She had no idea that she let down this cord that, that a number of years later, she had no idea that her son would marry Ruth. Wow. Moms, dads, you may not know what the outcome will be of your children or your grandchildren. But if you'll let down the cord, if you'll get a hold of God, if you'll grab hold of the rope, and say, I'm not letting go. Nor hell or fire or storm comes against me. I'm going to be on the Lord's side. I'm not going to give up. I'm going to hold on so that I can see the victory come for my family. And come for generations to come. That's what I want for my household. <laughs> Hallelujah. God helped Nehemiah finish the wall. Finish the gates. Though everybody was against him, God helped him. The three Hebrew children went into the fire with God. And the story says, and they came out of the fire, and they didn't even smell like smoke. See, when you go into the battle, don't think it's all going to be bad. Think that it's going to be good, for the battle is the Lord's. Get that in your heart this week. The battle is the Lord's. When you walk out of these doors this week, the battle is the Lord's. When you deal with your situation, the battle is the Lord's. For what? What can happen? God is for me. God is for you. Get it in your heart. Get it in your spirit. Doesn't matter if you're watching halfway around the world. God is for you. Hallelujah. Gideon won the battle. <laughs> he didn't need, he need half the people. He didn't even need a third of the people. 
I have people tell me, well, if I just get a little bit more, if I have a little bit more, if I have more people. As a pastor of this church, I was sitting there to, prior to today thinking, oh, Lord, help us on this worship team this week. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Those of you that come, this place is usually filled from drummers, multiple drummers, multiple people, a whole lot of choir people, choir people, and they're all gone except for a little remnant, except for a little chord. We pulled in the little kids that are the young kids today, and it's amazing what happened. It's amazing what happened. I'm sitting there saying, oh, Lord, Jesus, please, may God help us. And God helped us. And we found out we got some more singers, and it's all going to be good because this is God's church. Hello. This is God's church. So today, make sure you thank all those kids that have stepped up today. Natalie, great job today, my friend. Lepers saved the entire city. So I'm hoping you're going to finish that story about the lepers. They saved the entire city. Their city was in famine. Read that Second Chronicles story this week. You'll find out. <laughs> God in heaven made a thunderous roar. And all the, all the army guys, tens of thousands of them, that was going to besiege this city when they died, because they didn't need to do it. They stopped all the food from getting into the city. So the food was run out, and they were going to just die. And a few leper boys, or men, decided, we're going to go over there. Mm. And the whole, God caused this thunderous war, and all these guys ran off and they killed themselves. <laughs> Read the Bible. It's an incredible story. See, God has a way of working it out. It may not be your way. It may not be how you figured it out. But His ways are different than our ways. Trust in the Lord. Our God, lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge Him, and He will direct your path. He will guide you. He will take you out of the valley of the shadow of death. You won't have to fear no evil, for the Lord your God is with you. God directed the stone. David threw the stone, but God directed the stone. Hit the giant right between the eyes, and the giant dies. Wow. See, this Bible is filled with stories of real miracles, of God fulfilling his promises. The same promises that were for these guys and ladies is the same promises for you. Next week, you do not want to miss the passing of the baton. Because what happens is, is this gets transferred then. If you understand how this battle is the Lord's, this gets passed on to your children. I'm telling you, and don't you want your kids to be blessed? Don't you want your kids to grow up to know who God is? Because there's coming a day they're going to fight their own battles. If they haven't fought them yet, they're going to fight them sooner or later. And they better figure out that this God's big enough to handle their lives. Your story's being written. These have already been written. The ones that are in the book, they've already been written. You want to do some study, you can read them all. There's thousands of them. But today, this story is about you. I know the outcome of every one of those stories. And I can prophesy today to say that I believe God would have a great blessing for each of you today and take care of all of you for the rest of your life. But that's not the word I would give you. Because the outcome is up to you. I could say it, but you got to do it. Do you hear what I just said? 
I could say I want you blessed. I want you blessed. I could say that I want you to have a job. I want you to have a job. Do you hear what I just said? But the outcome's up to you. You got to get to the battle. You got to have the victory. And when you do that, you will see the destiny of your life is in the Lord's hands. He is still fulfilling promises. He hasn't run out. His love endures forever. His mercy is everlasting. His grace is sufficient. He hasn't run out of promises. He hasn't run out of blessings. He can still fight your fights. He can still deliver you from the enemy. He can still shelter you when you get to the storm. He can still be your rampart. He can be your protector. He can be your provider. He can be because he's God. And if he's God, I'm telling you, and he lives in your life, you can be the victor in this situation. Remember, the odds are normally against you. The outcome of the battle is the Lord's. Show up, stand firm, and see the Lord's work. Your destiny is in the Lord's hands. Champions lead to victory. Father, help us. Thank you, Lord, for giving me this word this week. For the people either here in Rome or around the world that have listened or will be listening to this message. Lord, I pray that they realize that these promises that you have given are not just for something that happened a few thousand years ago. They are for today. You have come to fight this fight with us. And you have chosen us to be a part of your family. So Lord, today, Almighty God, I pray that whoever is listening, that they realize that God, you are going to help them. For the person in this room that that God is not following, You're not following the Lord. You've gone the opposite direction. You've chosen a different God or you've chosen a a different religion. I'm asking you to choose a relationship today with Jesus Christ. He wants to be your father. He created you and he loves you. He loves you so much that he sent his son to die on a cross for you. Hear the word of the Lord today. Don't miss your moments in life. And this is one of those moments. God is for us. Today you've heard a word from the Lord. And I believe God has spoken to you. So if you say this prayer with me, I know God can change your life. They're saying it live here in Rome right now with me because God can change your life. God has a plan for you. I've told you that. And I want you to believe it with all of your heart. So will you say this prayer with me? Dear Lord Jesus, I invite you into my life this day. Change me. Help me. I pray, oh God, I'm going to live for you. Friend, if you've just said that prayer, I can tell you that God has just changed you and has come into your life. Now I believe that today you may have listened to this and you've known that God already lives in your life. Well, God wants to speak to you and help you. So I'm gonna pray a second prayer and that prayer is for a miracle to happen for you this day. I believe in miracles. I know you do as well. So let's pray and let God touch you right where you're listening to this sermon. Lord, I thank you today for my friend that has heard this message. Lord, I know that they have needs and situations that's going on in their life. God, you're a big God, and you hear and answer our prayers. So today, oh God, will you hear this prayer from your humble servant? God, will you answer this prayer on my new friend's behalf? Will you heal them? Will you touch them? Will you guide them? Lord, come in right now, wherever they're listening, Lord, and answer their prayer. Thank you, Lord, for doing that. If you've just said that prayer and listened to that prayer with me, I know that God has spoken to you. Would you do me a big favor? 
you're gonna see scrolled on the bottom of this a website with an email address. If you said the prayer that said, God come into my heart, or today you're believing with me for a miracle, I want you to drop us a quick note and say, hey pastor, I want you to continue to pray for me and my family. You know, God loves you and he has a plan for your life and I'll guarantee you, your best days are still in front of you. So God bless you and join us next week.